He taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. What is it about Jesus and the way that he was teaching that struck Mark, our gospel writer for today? What was it that struck him about how Jesus taught as compared to all the other teachers that had come before and those who were currently teaching in the temple? Why was it, what was it about him that led them to say that he taught as one having authority and not as the scribes? As I was thinking about that, I kind of went back in time to the seminary where I was uh, forced to read a novel. I don't p typically pick up British Victorian novels on my own, um, but I, we had to read the, the novel uh, Middlemarch. And maybe you've read it before. It's a different bunch of different uh, relationships, marriages, and so on and so forth. And varying degrees of uh, people are, you know, nobody's really a bad person except for one guy. And that person um, spends his time, all of his time, uh, even though he's married, he ignores his wife and spends all of his time basically compiling famous quotes and, and, and famous sayings from other smart people. He has a doc, he's a doctor himself, but he just basically, he's working on this, this master, the, kind of the key to the universe type of a thing, but he has no unique ideas of his own. He simply can regurgitate this, the stuff that other people have said. And of course, the man passes away before he has the opportunity to actually publish his work. And as I was thinking about that, that, that character has always stuck with me because I think that in some ways it's kind of like the scribes, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Not that they were all bad guys, you know. I mean, some of them we learn in the, in, in elsewhere in the Gospels and in the, in the Scriptures that some of them were good people. Um, I think, you know, sometimes it's like we, we always hear them, uh, Jesus is always coming after them. And I think it's kind of like my family, I'm from, you know, uh, the oldest of 11 and sometimes if like maybe two or three of us were being bad my mom would call her sister and be like the kids are being horrible or the kids are acting up well she didn't mean all of us she just meant a couple but nonetheless so I think that's kind of what the scribes are kind of we hear them kind of addressed today and while some of them may have been good people what we see is they really had no authority to, other than to simply say, this is what the law says. You know, had last night, if, if the law had been the whole point of Noel Hall, uh, the, the trivia contest, they'd all have gone 80 for 80. The scribes, Pharisees, they knew it inside and out. They could, they could you know, probably most of them had a lot of it memorized. So what is it then about Jesus that somehow takes it to another level? What is he able to do that those who can simply recite the law are not able to do. And I think that when we look at Christ and we reflect on what he talks about, he doesn't say, hey, don't forget, don't worry about the law anymore. In fact, he says, I come not to destroy one single letter of it. But he also doesn't, if you look throughout the scriptures, he's not simply regurgitating the law. Don't do that because this, that's the law. He's constantly telling people and showing people the why behind the law. The why. He's saying, here's the law, but here's the reason why. And that, I think, is why so many people were moved by his teaching and found a different kind of authority in Christ than they had encountered with all the other teachers that had come along before him. Jesus shows us the why. The question for us today is, does he continue to do that for us? Does he continue to unpack and show the why behind the laws and commandments that he and his Father have placed before us or not? We as Catholics believe that he does that for us. He speaks to us in our own hearts, but he also speaks to us through the church. 
And he continues to say, not only here are the commandments and instructions, but there's a reason why. There's happiness. There's sad, there, there is happiness, there's joy, there's peace, there's sanity to these laws. And that's, Christ continues to say, that is the why. Jesus is saying what St. Paul says in today's second reading. I say this to you not as a burden. Not as a burden. But so often we receive it that way. Do we as Catholic Christians believe that Christ continues to demonstrate for us and teach with that same authority that the gospel writer witnessed? Does he continue to teach us and lead us with that same authority through the church today or not? That's our challenge to see that. There are a couple of reasons, I think, or a couple of obstacles that might be in our way that would prevent us, perhaps, from kind of seeding the fact that, yes, in, yes, in fact, Christ does continue to speak to us and lead us through our church. One, of course, is that we're often hearing about that from priests or bishops, people who are already part of the machine, if you will. And so many people, you know, it's easy or a temptation perhaps to say, of course he would say that as a priest. Of course he would say that as a bishop. He's part of it. He's part of the machine or the bureaucracy or whatever it is. That's why he is trying to encourage us to see Christ's teachings still working through us and, and speaking to us through the church. A brief word about that, I can't speak for other bishops or other priests or other people who work in the church, but I can just say that for me, it's not about that. Yesterday, or on Friday was my day off and typically what I like to do for my day off is go to my parents' house into the woods and chop firewood. That's my idea of a good time. I don't sit around with other priests and talk about, hey, I got a couple more people to buy into the church, you know. Um, I feel like for me personally, what, what motivates me and in fact I, I believe has brought me to the priesthood is precisely what we hear in the first reading. We hear there a person, Christ, God the Father, talking about a person coming forth to, to share with people the things that God has done for them. And for me, I, the experiences that I've had, I had a very real encounter very, and continue to have that encounter with Christ and His church. And I feel that I, I can do nothing but share that with people. And, and so that, for me, is my motivation. The other obstacle I think that we can sometimes encounter in terms of, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if Christ is really teaching through the church. If those... If, if that authority of Christ rests in the church or not. And I think that, that that other obstacle can sometimes be the things that people have done in the name of the church in the past, or maybe today. One example of this, um, I was it's in the seminary still, and I was at a 4th of July celebration party, and uh, we were playing cornhole or something, and a person, a guy comes up next to me, and he's like, you're a seminarian, aren't you? And I already knew at this point that when you hear that question, it's not going to be good what comes after. But yet, yes, I am a seminarian. He said, yeah, I used to be Catholic, but I know about the bad popes. It's like, the bad popes? It's like, yeah, the guys in like, you know, about a thousand years ago who uh, had, you know, some of them had kids and things like that and mistresses and so on and so forth. And it's like, he was kind of like, I'm on to you. You know, like, I'm on to your secret. Like, we try and, you know, keep that hush-hush or something. Um, and I wanted to say, you know, I wish I had said, well, it probably wouldn't have been too charitable, but I wish I would have said, you know, so if that Pope a thousand years ago had not had a mistress, then you'd still be Catholic? Like, um, but I didn't say that. I just kind of continued on. Um, but, you know, that, that is a real temptation, I think, for us, or a real opportunity for us to walk away or to say, ah, Christ's authority doesn't rest in the church anymore. 
or, or maybe it never did, because of people in the past, the Crusades or Inquisition or whatever, there's a whole litany of things. We also can look to things in the present as well. People doing things in the name of the church or as members of the church. I can, I can share that with you, nothing scandalous or anything, but re recently I was uh, lied to by a leader in the church. Um, it wasn't Father Joe, don't worry about it. Uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't horrible or anything like that, but nonetheless, I mean, I think we encounter things like that all the time, and while I encountered that, I still, I didn't run out and say, well, now I'm going to do whatever I want, because someone in the, that, had, that really doesn't have anything to do with Christ and that authority that the gospel writers sensed resting in the church. And so that, I think, is our challenge to overcome those obstacles and to ask ourselves, is that authority still here in the church? Is Christ continuing to speak to us through the church? To pretend that I'm self-sufficient and that I don't need any moral guidance and that I don't need any instruction or help along the way, that's not to see the world as it actually is. That's actually to spiral into some form of madness or insanity. Christ and his church continue to try and shepherd us and lead us toward sanity, toward happiness, towards peace. May we pray for one another and grow in our faith each day so that we may seek that authority of Christ more fully and we may seek to learn more about the why and not just focusing on the commands themselves.